Hello, and welcome to today's CUBE conversation. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer. I'm the Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the CUBE Research. And today I'm joined by Alan Treffler. Alan's the founder and CEO of PEGA, software company he founded in 1983. Alan, welcome. So glad oh, to have thank you. Thank you, Shelley. You know, I'll, I will say that I have covered PEGA for many, many years. I've attended many of your events over the years, and I've had the opportunity to spend time with and interview many of your senior executives. And today, this is the first time I've been able to have a conversation with you. So I'm very excited about that. Well, as am I. It's uh, be great to catch up here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for some backstory here, Alan is a man of many dimensions. He's the son of a Holocaust survivor. Um, he worked in his father's antique restoration company before he started PEGA in 1983 when he was all of 27 years old. He took the Boston-based company public in 1996 and today employs over 5,000 people with sales of about $1.4 billion in 2023. And beyond his business accomplishments, fun fact, Treffler is a chess master. Um, so with that, Alan, again, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. So I've covered some of your bio. What can you tell me about your backstory that people might not know? Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, chess was significant in my life uh, because I think it influenced the way I think about things and, and how you try to evaluate positions. And I find it can be very helpful in business. But chess also got me pulled into computers. I was uh, recruited by the Dartmouth College uh, com computer uh, team that was working on teaching computers to play chess. And at that point, I had just won a tournament and had become a very highly rated player. And they asked me to come and to work with them. In an era where the uh, the AI was very, very different and the uh, quality of chess play, I assure you, was not remotely what it's like today. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And But that makes perfect sense. I mean, chess is a game of strategy, right? <laughs> it does make perfect sense, I think. Um, and, you know, well, there's you know, also... I, I, I like chess because, uh, unlike some games, uh, in chess, it's uh, full disclosure of information. Yeah. Both sides can see everything that's happening, and yet there's a tremendous opportunity to influence the results and to 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 really implement strategies. Even if your opponent sees it, they can't always counter it. Yeah, yeah. I don't play chess, but I marvel at it, and um, so I can I can definitely see the connection. You know, they talk a lot too about the connection between music and math and how mathematics is really just sort of like music. And a lot of times people who really excel at music also really excel at math. So I think there's some connections there as well in terms of how our brains think. So we are not far away from this year's PEGA World event, which will be held in Las Vegas, June 9th through 11th. So I wanted to be able to spend a little time with you in advance of that event, talking about sort of what's happening in the industry, what you're thinking in terms of um, what's ahead, and and just also kind of get a sneak peek of what you might be wanting to share at PEGA here coming up in June. So let's start off with the topic that's on everyone's mind today, uh, artificial intelligence. There's not an event that I've been to recently that hasn't led with all things AI, obviously, it's playing a big role, um, and especially with software solutions and what you and the team at PEGA do. So there's more than one type of AI, and Gen AI, Gen AI of course, is getting all of the attention. Is this justified? Well, I think um, we're both in the midst of an, um, an amazing, noisy, bubblicious sort of moment. But <laughs> at the core of it, there is uh, a real reality there where this is going to profoundly and and dramatically change yeah. large yeah. numbers of people's jobs, the business community, how we deliver to customers, um, all of that. And you know, we we have been fully vested in this for the last eighteen months. Well, yeah, and and I think though sometimes what I think about when the conversation turns to AI is that you know. PEGA is not new to the AI train. I mean, you know, your company has been using AI in innovative ways for a very long time, whether customers realize that or not, right? So Gen AI is something new, but AI-powered technology solutions is very much in your wheelhouse. So that's yeah. not, you know, we're not breaking new ground there. Well, there there is some that's uh, familiar and some that is quite new. Yeah. 
So, yeah. you know, we've worked since uh, 2012 to bring statistical AI, the uh, ability to do machine learning and digest numbers and figure out, for instance, what the best offer for an individual is and uh, how to do that, how to do that in real time, how to do that consistently. Yeah. That's something we do a tremendous amount of for our clients. But generative AI opens up a couple of new dimensions that suddenly allow you to, in addition to, to statistical AI, uh, enable you to actually be creative in, in some profound new ways. And they are different, but very complementary. Yeah, different, complementary, and very exciting. So what what do you think that when, when we talk about AI, let's look at the chessboard. <laughs> what do you see? Um, what do you see this next wave of Gen AI looking like? And then how do you see companies being able to leverage Gen AI capabilities and differentiate themselves moving forward? Well, I, I think there are two real avenues. Um, you know, the first is what I would describe as AI features, which is how do you use AI to be able to, for example, summarize a conversation uh, for a call center rep so that they don't have to type things in. The right. AI can listen to the conversation, can summarize it, can actually input fields. Um, or how do you use AI to figure out how to write a better piece of correspondence that might go out? Those are all what I would describe as feature use cases. And we're going to be showing a bunch of them at Pega World as well. But there's an additional approach that I actually don't see other folks doing that's going to be a highlight of what we do and show at Pega World. And that's using generative AI to actually change the fundamental fabric of the processes themselves so that the AI actually builds and improves and optimizes processes in addition to having features that are then used as they execute. And I think that is enormously exciting. Yeah, I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be a very interesting thing to watch evolve. You know, one of the things you mentioned, you know, AI for call center transcripts and things like that. What I'm seeing in the industry is that, you know, when we're talking about what's happening, we're talking about the evolution of tech, we're talking about the role Gen AI is playing. And, you know, when we talk about things like, transcript automatically generating transcripts for call center agents and things like that i look at those as this is not a differentiator i mean this is a part of your technology solution that absolutely positively has to exist because if it doesn't people are going to go with somebody else i mean every vendor in the space has that capability um so i when i look at these kind of announcements around how we're using gen ai and things like that when i hear call transcripts i'm like yeah i expect that so so i'm looking for like what you mentioned things that are different unique um more creative ways to use this technology and i think that's really going to allow companies to get a significant leg up well and it enables companies to change the very processes themselves, not just do them more effectively. Don't get me wrong, that's still a very important thing to do sure. things as uh, effectively as you can. And Gen AI helps. But the alternate use of Gen AI, to actually use it to define, design, build out, and optimize the process itself, that to me is a much more exciting use case, actually, and yeah. more impactful, ultimately. Well, yeah, and it kind of moves beyond sort of the trendy use cases and, you know, the more, you know, the use cases that can really lead to some exciting, innovative results. I think that that, to me, that's this frontier that we're on, that we're experiencing at an incredibly rapid pace that's really exciting. Well, and I think AI is going to change lots of things about the processes and, and institution. I think it's going to change not just the features, which I don't want to mitigate the uh, or minimize the importance of those. Those do matter. But being able to change the process, being able to change the actual way that education works, where the AI can become a personalized instructor uh, in a Socratic sort of dialogue with the students, as opposed yeah. to having folks do the more traditional sort of classroom material or lectures that weren't designed just for them. AI is is right now in the process of revolutionizing those things. And uh, we're going to be showing it for real at Pega World. Oh, how exciting. So I want to talk a little bit now about the impact of 
AI technology in the workplace. And, you know, I know that you're no stranger to this thing. And we've been having these conversations for a very long time. You know, AI is going to replace all the humans and our jobs are all going to go away and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I've been saying for a long time, the reality here is that if it can be automated, it will be automated, you know, accept that, um, understand the importance of continuous learning and reskilling and things like that. And also be excited about the opportunity to spend your time doing you know, things that have more business value than the banal daily tasks that many of us have to kind of slog through. One of the things that I'll mention is that a few years ago, we did some research with PEGA that was so very different than many of the research projects that I'm involved in. And a lot of times when we're doing studies for clients, they're very interested in thoughts and insights from senior leaders. And what PEGA did when they worked with us and commissioned this study was PEGA wanted us to survey mid-level employees and lower level employees, I don't mean lower level, but more frontline employees, people, not just senior leaders. And that it was a very, very different situation. And what I loved about that was that it allowed us to speak to people throughout the organization who weren't necessarily in management roles, leadership roles, but who were in the trenches using these solutions. And some of the things that they shared was so, so impactful to me. You know, they talked about um, some of their responses were, you know, they really wanted to be involved. They wanted uh, leaders to talk with them and get their insights as, you know, as solutions were being developed, as processes were being developed and things like that. And, and they weren't scared about technology replacing their jobs. They were excited about the opportunities that that presented. And I really loved that body of research from that particular audience. And, and I thought it was really a great thing that PEGA did to try to get insights from a different part of the workforce. But with that said, talk with me a little bit about how you see today, and by the way, that research that we did was probably five years ago, um, but how do you see this technology today impacting employees in different parts of the business? And, you know, it, and the reality of it is, you know, I, I know that this technology is not reserved for those with deep technical backgrounds. That's the beauty of, of these kinds of solutions. But talk with me a little bit about what you see ahead for employees in different parts of organizations. Well, you know, I think the fear of losing uh, one's job um, is going to, in some cases, be valid. There is going to be yeah. a change. But I, I think it's much more likely that uh, the person someone loses their job to is another person who understands AI rather than AI itself. That this is really an empowering tool that people need to get comfortable with. They need to understand the limits, what it's good at, what it's not good at. And you know, our responsibility as a vendor is to be able to package this in a way that is both real and safe and accessible. And that's what we've been working to do to figure out how do we make things that can have the reliability and auditability that our customers insist on. At the same time, it really brings a lot of power to the way that people do their work. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I hear a lot from anybody playing in the AI space, Gen AI space, um, you know, this technology will have and is having a, a fundamental impact on how brands connect with their customers, how they provide service to customers. And so much of this is all around customer experience and de delivering the very, very best in customer experiences. And so I, I know that you're on the front lines of seeing this. How do you see this sort of evolution happening and, and really the kind of assist that these technology solutions are providing to brands? Well, I think the customer experience is the perfect uh, place for a marriage between statistical AI, in which you really want to figure out what the customer wants. You want to figure out based on the data, what the customer has been doing, what they want to do in the future. And you want to figure out what would qualify as an exceptional experience. But then generative AI can complement that to generate the types of communications, the types of offers, uh, the types of experiences that the customer would want. And it's that combination that really drives things home. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 
I would imagine that this technology will have a huge impact, and I'm sure you're seeing this at Pega, you know, on how quickly people, how quickly companies can innovate and and what um, what kind of capabilities this spurs. What are you seeing on that front? Well, you know, one of the most exciting things comes out of this new capability that we're going to be highlighting at Pega World that uh, is actually available on our website. It's called Blueprint. And people who have been using Blueprint, and we've had thousands of people use it, have told me that they're blown away. It allows you to go and put in the, uh, the uh, a set of workflows or an application that you want to do. Maybe you want to, uh, I don't know, open accounts at a bank. Maybe, as somebody did, you want to create a European football team you know, to go and, and understand how to go through the processes of hiring, going through the legal setup, generating the media and publicity all of those elements, we're able to use the power of the internet coupled with our best practices that we've developed over the many years we've been working on this to let the system in literally two minutes provide you a blueprint for how you might do this. And it completely changes the way that people envision and re-envision how they want their businesses to work. Yeah. It's actually super exciting. Yeah, I've... I've played around a little bit with Blueprint. And it is so interesting. And it's, you know, I, I mean, I've spent a career as a strategist. And so being able to have that kind of an assist at the beginning of a process when you're just thinking, you're noodling, you're trying to throw stuff against the wall and that sort of thing, I see that as incredibly valuable. Well, and, you know, what it replaces for us is we used to have customers we'd work with, and it would not be uncommon for us to spend a couple of days or even a week at a whiteboard with yeah. you know, post-it notes and trying <laughs> to envision um, what an optimal sort of process or set of processes would be. And now, in literally a couple of minutes, asking a couple of guided questions, um, the computer is able to synthesize uh, some amazing best practices for you. And suddenly, you don't have to accept them, but at least you're responding to a, more than a straw man, a pretty solid blueprint that you then get to customize and change and play with. And it, um, I think it's already leading to radical changes in yeah. how people apply technology. These are exciting times we're living in, Alan. You know, I, my colleagues and I talk about this on a regular basis. And, you know, we're both old enough to have lived through some sort of revolutionary times. You know, the internet changed everything, right? About how we work, how we live, how we communicate. Um, the advent of social media changed things. And now with Gen AI, you know, you made a comment earlier about, you know, um, jobs will be replaced, but in most instances, jobs, people will be replaced by people who understand how to work alongside generative AI and AI solutions. And I think that's, you know, that's very true. Um, let's talk a little bit about speaking about jobs. You know, there's a lot of developers out there who are a little concerned about um, kind of the impact of Gen AI on their roles. Um, it's, and you've talked a little bit, I know, about Gen AI's ability to generate code. Talk with me a little bit about what do you mean by that? Well, it's not just being able to generate code because you know the world doesn't need more code. We have way too much code. It's the ability to generate structure, the ability to take the business problem you want to solve and put a structure around it and have that structure then able to automate the business process. And that ability to hook in process automation with generative AI um, and and also powered by statistical AI to help make sure you make the right decisions is an right. incredibly powerful combination. And I do think that people who are quote, you know, quote just programmers um, are gonna have some problems because the computer can help you churn out code way faster. But right. if you wanna do better than churning out code, it can also allow you to restructure the problems with this you know, blueprint-like process automation. And uh, I, I think the results are mind boggling. Yeah, I think that really, I have uh, I have four daughters, two of whom are high school seniors, 
graduating here in a couple of weeks. And one of the many conversations that I have with them is about career su- success. And I truly believe that regardless of where it is you decide that you want to focus your efforts in terms of building a career, it's you need to go into it. You know, you spoke about program people who are just programmers might have a problem. The reality of today's world is that I believe that success will come to people who are wired for change, who welcome and embrace change, who understand that continuous learning. I mean, you're not done. You're not ever done. You know, all of us, there's so much to learn on a daily basis. And working alongside this technology can kind of help us supercharge everything that we do. And there is no room for a mindset of, oh, I don't even want to mess with this, or oh, I don't want to learn something new, <laughs> or whatever, because it, it it is, we're at a transformation moment I think in our in our society well it, it that's very true and you know the change is upon us as it will continue to be into the future and mm-hmm. I think that you know your daughters need to make sure that they you know learn critical thinking but also yeah. learn how to learn yeah. um, learn the capacity for change and uh, I, I don't I don't know if uh, you know our tagline Shelley but Pega's registered trademark we actually own this phrase, is build for change. Because we think that being equipped to not just handle change, but prosper from it is the thing that really differentiates the successful and the excited from the unexcited and uh, unsuccessful. Well, you know, in all the years I've worked with the team at Pega, I did not know that was your tagline. And I love it. And I I have always been very grateful that, you know, I, I feel like in many instances, we get what we get in terms of our personalities and how we're wired and that sort of thing. And truly the key to my success, my career success has been that I love change and I operate well in a state of chaos and, you know, figuring out puzzles and things like challenges are sort of, you know, things that I really enjoy. So, um, but learning, I think, to (laughs) embrace change and know that it's a given. And one of the things that I tell people all the time is that, you know, if you stop and think about, the pace of change just over the course of the last five to 10 years, and you feel in any way overwhelmed by that, buckle up because that pace of change is just going to accelerate. And I know you know that, um, but it, it w- these are very interesting times that we live in for sure. They, they are. And once again, um, there's a tremendous opportunity. We see this as perfect for us. Uh, yeah. Gen AI coupled with our statistical AI that we have, is exactly the sort of thing that will make PEGA more effective for our clients. And yeah. we can already see that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the consumer side for just a minute. Talk with me about some of the benefits that consumers will start to notice when brands begin implementing this type of technology on a broad basis. Well, things will be more personal. Um, they won't have to deal with uh, sort of generic processes or you know generic service engagements, they'll they'll get things that will make more sense for them uh, because it's going to be possible for the organizations that they work with to, uh, well, to, to tailor in a way that has never been possible before. And, and those organizations uh, you know, are not just going to be empowered to do that. They're going to have to do that or they're yeah. going to be competitively disadvantaged. Yeah. Well, I think what you want is you want your customers to be walking away from every interaction that they have with your brand thinking, I really kind of dreaded that, but that was a great conversation. It was a speedy resolution to my problem. I am so happy with the result. I really enjoyed that. You know, like those are the kind of things you want people to walk away from interactions with your company feeling. And I think that is, to me, some of the power that Gen AI brings to um, to the the marketplace, you know, it really allows us to laser focus on customer service and quit expecting our customers to kind of slog through things because that's the way it's always been. It's it's also going to let organizations um, deal with their customers more effectively and more accurately. Yeah. Uh, the the technology can listen to the conversation and advise the service rep if there are things that they didn't get right, or advise yeah. the service rep. If there's something required by law, certain disclaimers, disclosures, to make sure that everything uh, needed to make that interaction proper and most effective happens. And that will be 
seamless, invisible to the client. Yeah. It's very, very important to ensure that they're getting the right stuff. And they'll just walk away feeling good. Yes. yes and that's right. what we want, <laughs> right? That we want is them what we want. Yeah, we want them to feel good. We want them to stay loyal customers. We want them to feel appreciated and respected and all those things. And technology can allow us to do this. So so how does Pega fit into all this? Will you talk with us a little bit about some of your recent product launches? I know you mentioned Blueprint, um, but let's talk about a little bit how all of this fits into your long-term AI strategy at Pega. Well, the um, AI strategy at Pega is very deep in our technology. And by... Uh, implementing uh, the AI the way we have, we're actually able to do that third use of AI that I described, that, that use of AI to actually update, change, and evolve the processes themselves. And that is something I think is tremendously exciting. We've, we've also got a lot of AI use cases that are just gonna change the way people work with clients. For instance, um, one of them is something we call a coach, which is on any, part of the PEGA system, you can actually say, hey, AI, give the person assistance. Tell them what's really going on with this customer. What were the last things that happened with this customer? How do I make sure that I know the best thing to say? What is the best action? And AI, a combination of statistical and generative, powering all of that is tremendously, tremendously effective. A another thing is using AI to optimize the processes themselves either by looking at what's happening and learning from data. So for example, you can predict which items you're working on might be late. So you can remediate them before there's a problem. Um, or actually looking at the history of the processes and figuring out how to mine them, how to get the right sort of advice out of them to optimize them. We're going to be showing all of this in detail at Pega World. We've got a 100,000 square feet of exhibition space where we've got over 200 demos. Most of them are based on AI that will let people actually see and touch and tangibly appreciate how this can really work in, in a world where the candidly, a lot of the stuff out there is just hype. So this, I think, will yeah. make it very real for people. Well, that's awesome. Something to look forward to for sure. So let's talk about customers. What are you hearing from your clients about AI and Gen AI, and what what are they seeing as the biggest challenges that they're facing? And maybe what are they seeing as some of the opportunities? I mean, obviously, delivering better customer experiences has to be top of the list. But what are you seeing? What are you seeing and hearing from customers? Well, what I hear from my clients is that uh, they are overwhelmed by the number of vendors and the number of their own internal staff who are coming to them with you know, one AI miracle after another. And so what I'm hearing from them is they really want to understand what's real, what can actually be applied, what can be applied with the right, you know, security, the right empathy, the right auditability that in, you know, we work a lot in regulated industries. You need to be able to explain to the regulators why you made a decision, what you did, and why that was a high quality decision two years after the fact. So being able to bring that sort of connectedness. So it's it's not just a science project. There are a lot of AI science projects that are out there. We're looking to do this in an enterprise quality, enterprise grade right. way for our clients. And I'm, I'm seeing our, our customers and prospects really responding to that. Well, I'm not surprised. I, I will say that one of my uh, one of my other coverage areas is cybersecurity. And I spent a lot of time thinking about and talking about um, you know, AI security and the risks that AI brings and talking with folks in highly regulated industries and all of that sort of thing. And, you know, you mention, um, you mention some of the people that are kind of playing at AI. I mean, there's a lot of vendors there and not to denigrate anybody in the space. I think, you know, the startup world is amazing and all of that sort of thing. But I think that when you're talking about things like compliance and regulatory concerns and things like that, it's imperative that you work with vendors who take security incredibly seriously, for whom security is foundational part of anything that they build and develop and that sort of thing. So I know that I know that you had to have had and, and still are having countless conversations with business leaders about AI risk. What? How do you speak to their concerns? 
Well, the, the, we think about it in a couple of different ways. One is that um, the risk of using AI varies tremendously with the use case involved. For some use cases, for some things you can do, there's actually no risk or very little risk. For others, it could be extremely risky. And what we advise our clients and what we ourselves have done is to focus on the situations where the risk is, is manageable, not high, um, where you don't have people worried about leaking data into the training model of the AI systems, where you've got the right guardrails up to deploy yeah. AI at scale safely. And so I think selecting the use cases is absolutely critical. And we do try to provide advice to our clients on right. how to do that. Awesome. So you talked a little bit about the massive number of demos that are going to be happening at, happening at Pega World. Um, you've kind of talked a little bit about some of the cool things that you're doing. Can you leave us as we wrap this conversation with any teasers about what people can look forward to in Vegas in, you know, just about a month? Well, I, I think there are two things that really stand out to me. One is that we have um, an assembly of, of over 60 clients who are getting up and speaking and talking very specifically as to how they're applying this technology, um, AI and also other pragmatic types of things. And there's so much to learn from those customers and their real life stories. Um, and it's all very tangible. And I think that is enormously, enormously exciting. And um, also uh, we'll be making some uh, product reveals that I think people will love to see from the main stage. Well, I am very much looking forward to it. And I will say, after attending more Pega World events than I can count, my favorite part of the event are always the customer stories because your team does an amazing job of uh, really highlighting exceptional use cases. And, you know, I think that, you know, when you're an audience, when you're listening to, when you're at an event where you're listening to these kind of things, really di diving into this was our challenge and this was what we decided on. And this is, you know, this is what we encountered when we implemented it. And these are the results that we're seeing. Those are the kind of stories I think that people really look forward to hearing. So I'm glad to know that we can count on those ahead. And Alan Treffler, founder and CEO of Pega, it's been wonderful having you. I'll again remind our audience, Pega World is happening in Las Vegas, June 9th through the 11th. I'll include a link to the event in my show notes that you can check out if you want more information. But Alan, thanks so much for spending time with me. It's been fantastic. Well, Shelly, thank you very much. And uh, we're looking forward to Pega World and look forward to seeing you there. It'll be great.